Hi everyone! So if you're thinking about getting guinea pigs, then I'm sure bringing your new guinea pigs home and becoming a guinea pig owner is something that really excites you. You might be asking that question, hmm, where do I actually get these guinea pigs from? So today I'm going to talk about the good and the bad of guinea pig rescues, guinea pig breeders, pet shops and individual online adverts. And I'll also run through a step-by-step -step action plan for what I think are the best steps to take towards getting your new piggies. So before we get started, I just wanted to say that I really hope people are considering getting two or more guinea pigs. As we know, guinea pigs are highly social animals and they are happier and healthier in pairs or small groups. But to help you decide, I want to firstly think about you. So if you have any strong views on maybe even possibly supporting an industry that might promote poor animal welfare, then pet shops and some guinea pig breeders are probably gonna be out of the question for you. And then we need to think about the individual piggies that we are bringing home that are coming to live with us. So obviously we want them to be happy and healthy little piggies. We need to think about things like have they come from a place where they were well looked after and well socialised. Okay, so let's start with guinea pig rescues. It's a fact that you are more likely to get healthy guinea pigs. Yes, rescues are there to take in unwanted and even neglected pets, but they care deeply about the welfare of the guinea pigs they're looking after and they will not try and rehome guinea pigs until they have been in quarantine, they've had all their health checks, they've had any vet treatment that they need. Guinea pigs from rescues are also pre-bonded so you don't need any of the stress that can come with trying to bond guinea pigs from different places. Sometimes single males and females are available, for example if you're looking for a spayed female or a neutered male to go in with a group of females then that's possible too. Also don't forget that guinea pigs rehome a lot of baby guinea pigs so don't jump to the conclusion that you need a pet shop for young guinea pigs. The only bad thing about rescues is that they are few and far between although in the UK we do actually have quite a lot of guinea pig rescues but in other countries such as the US where it's a really big country then they are going to be a lot more spaced out and it might be that your closest guinea pig rescue is still miles and miles away and too far for you to realistically travel to. Hello sweetheart! Are you joining us? Yes. If rescues are not an option, then pet shops are the next most common way to go. Unfortunately, with pet shops, there is a much higher chance that you are gonna get a guinea pig that has a health condition. The most common are things like parasites and other skin problems, but even upper respiratory infections can be relatively common. As part of this series, I will be having a video on giving your guinea pigs a thorough health check, so look out for that one. And the reason why guinea pigs from pet shops are more likely to have health problems is that unfortunately some breeders who stock pet shops keep the guinea pigs in very poor condition and everything about the whole process for a little baby guinea pig being born at a breeder if the guinea pigs there aren't well looked after they're being taken out of that kind of poor environment, having the stress of transit, being put on the pet shop floor um, with maybe a load of other stranger guinea pigs that they don't know, a completely new environment. And then when someone buys them, they're pulled out from that environment into the new cage environment where things might be less stressful, but still there's so many changes along the way and they're only a little baby guinea pig. The stress of that whole process makes them more vulnerable to health conditions. And what can also happen with pet shops is that they don't separate the males and females properly and you can find yourself bringing home males instead of females or vice versa or even worst case scenario one of each and then you end up with a pregnant guinea pig and you have to go through the stress of it having its babies and then where to rehome them to. So my very first pair of guinea pigs that I got from a pet shop were meant to be two little girls then they turned out to be two little boys who were also infested with running lice. These problems with pet shops can also apply to some extent to guinea pig breeders and other online adverts. But with all of these things, things can vary. So it's worth trying to find out more about the individual pet shop breeder or online advert to help you decide. And that's where the next part of the video comes in because we'll run through a plan of action for getting your new piggies. Okay, so as a plan of action, I would first look at rescues. Go on guinea pig forums and other websites and you can find 
lists of rescues in your country. They're not always on places like Google, so it's worth doing a little bit more digging to try and find them. If when you're looking, you realize that rescues are just simply too far away and it's not gonna be possible for you to travel to them, then still make sure you check them out. Make sure you like their Facebook pages. They're really amazing people who run these rescues. And even if you can't physically adopt a guinea pig from them, showing your appreciation and support through other ways is really important. So if guinea pig rescues aren't an option, then pet shops. You might have a few different ones in your area and do a little bit of investigation to find out what might be the best option to go for. So firstly, if they're a pet store chain, then you can look on their website, see if they list any policies about where they get their small animals that they sell on from, or maybe they have an ethical policy page that you can have a look at. I know in the UK, there is a pet shop that has a quite a good ethical policies and they're called Pets Corner. If they don't have any policies, which is probably more likely, then going into store, talking to the members of staff there is something that you can do. Ask them about the guinea pigs. Are they knowledgeable about guinea pigs? Do they care about them? Do they know where the guinea pigs in store come from? If so, do they know maybe how often they get the guinea pigs? What kind of conditions they might be kept in at the breeder? And what's the general vibe that you get? Is the store somewhere that cares about their animals and wants to make sure they go to good homes? Or are they basically just a money-making machine? If you're considering a pet shop, then look at the guinea pigs that they have out there. Make sure that the females and males are separated. You should get an opportunity to handle and look at the guinea pigs that you're considering buying. Make sure you have a look for any potential health conditions. So looking at the guinea pigs in the pen, are they all healthy, happy, bright-eyed, running around, nice and active? With breeders and online websites, it might be a bit more difficult, but still you can talk to the people running the adverts or get in touch with the breeders and they should be happy to answer your questions, especially the breeders. If they're people that really care about their guinea pigs going to good homes, it's all things that basically show that you want to become a good owner and they should appreciate that. It might be more of a mix from those online adverts because yes, you might get people who are simply just looking to get rid of their guinea pig and really it should be going into a rescue situation. But really go with your gut instinct, see what kind of vibe you get from these people. In general, you want to get the feeling that they care where their guinea pigs are going to. But that is it for this video today, guys. But before you go, if you found it useful, then please do let us know by giving us a thumbs up. But if you want to see more of me and the piggies, then hit that subscribe button. But for now, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Myra is here.